All right, so if you're like me and you're constantly chomping at the bit to get your hands on anything related to the sci-fi genre, and more specifically, you like your sci-fi weird, gross, dramatic, and just flat out heartbreaking, well then a little series called Scavenger's Reign has a real chance to be the best science fiction show you've ever seen in your entire life, and I cannot wait to talk about it. What's up guys, I'm Sully and today I'm very excited because we're talking about the brand new animated sci-fi show that's streaming on Max, Scavenger's Reign. All you need to know about this one is that the story goes like this. The remaining crew of a damaged interstellar freighter ship find themselves stranded on a beautiful yet unforgiving alien planet where they must survive long enough to escape or be rescued. As the survivors struggle to locate their downed ship and missing crewmates, their new home reveals a hostile world allowed to thrive without human interference. So this is a show that pretty much came out of nowhere as far as I'm concerned. It wasn't on my radar at all, no one was really talking about it. And I found out after doing a little bit of digging that it's based off of a 2016 short film, but it didn't really seem like there was any hype surrounding this new series. And if it wasn't for one of my buddies asking me if I've been checking it out, who knows how long it would have taken me to find this beautiful little show. But now that all 12 episodes are streaming on Max and I've seen this entire journey from beginning to end, I'll just put it out there and say, this is not a project you can afford to miss if you're a big science fiction fan. Now there's so much to gush about when it comes to this show, but I think the first aspect I wanna to touch on is its presentation. I'm absolutely obsessed with the visual style and the animation that's being used in the series. Everything is somehow colorful and terrifying at the same time. On numerous occasions when looking at these massive, larger than life organisms that our survivors encounter while they're on this journey, you're gonna be thinking that a boss from a Legend of Zelda game was just plopped right into the show. And as the series unfolds, it becomes very obvious that the style of animation that's being used here has the same amount of detail and charm infused into it as something like a Studio Ghibli film. And as I was watching the show, I was constantly making comparisons to Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind in the best ways possible. But even though this project has a very similar beauty to that film, it is way more grisly and disgusting. Like, I can't emphasize it enough. This shit is gross, and it's weird, and it's right up my alley. It's basically an animated, futuristic version of the insane bug sequence from Peter Jackson's King Kong. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say that, consider yourself lucky. If you do know what I'm talking about, I probably just bubbled up 15 years of childhood trauma. And even though the animation is fantastic and so much fun to look at, the extremely dire situation our survivors find themselves in and the heightened emotional stakes is what has you coming back for more. Like that's really the bread and butter of the series for me, because how many times have we seen a storyline like this in any genre where a bunch of people get stuck somewhere and have to figure out how to survive? Loads of times. But this show is filled to the brim with interesting character relationships, nuanced flashbacks, and life or death decisions, putting it above all the other survival stories I've seen depicted in recent years. Like you really just feel for these people and have a genuine interest in seeing them get their shit together and somehow finding a way home. Obviously though, this ecosystem has other plans. And on numerous occasions, it's presented to us that humans are the invasive species on this alien world. So your allegiance can waver from time to time. But even though all of these episodes are only about 25 minutes long, the storytelling and the world building are so fluid and interconnected that I can honestly say that the characters in this show are the ones that I've become attached to the most out of any series this year. Which is crazy to think about too because there's really only like five hours of content here and each episode divides its time among the different groups of survivors and despite it being structured in that manner I was fully engaged with every step of these characters journeys and I think what it really comes down to is they do a really good job of giving us a diverse group of players to pay attention to here. Like everybody will probably have a different favorite character that will resonate with them the most and will have the same basic principles as they would if they became trapped on some creepy crawly faraway alien planet. I have to say though, what really impressed me about the show is how little exposition the creators provided to the audience. There's so much weird shit that happens on this planet when it comes to how these organisms interact, what certain materials are used for, and what rules govern this ecosystem. They easily could have held our hand through all of that like a lot of science fiction projects do, but they trusted the viewer to throw what they knew to the wind and just get on board with whatever's happening on screen. A decision that a lot of showrunners don't make very often, unfortunately, 
but will make this one a shining example of how to do it right. Outside of all of that, there's not really that much more to say about this show without giving away some of its biggest surprises. It's truly something you need to fully dive into and experience for yourself. I really think that if you're a massive science fiction fan like I am, you'll be completely taken with this show, whether it be because of the struggles our main characters have to go through to complete their mission, or because of this alien world that's brimming with insanely creative biological life. I'm hoping this isn't the last we see of this ecosystem. It's way too wacky and inspired to never see the light of day again. But if this is somehow the end, it's been one hell of a ride. Scavenger's Reign gets a Sully score of five stars. So that's my review of the latest sci-fi show. What do you think is the best science fiction series you've ever seen? Let me know in the comments below. I need to add to my watch list. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys at the next one.